Alrighty, how's it going people? So today's video is going to be changing out the door speakers, technically subs. Um, the reason I say that is because I did watch a previous video uh, that someone else posted where they replaced the door speakers, quote unquote speakers, um, with like new ones. Uh, unfortunately I ordered some uh, kicker door speakers and when I uh, took it all apart and put the new speaker in I realized that they weren't actually speakers, they were uh, mini subs and they don't work the same at all so uh, I sent those back, got some mini door speaker or mini door subs to replace the uh, originals with and that's what I'm going to be doing today in this video. Alright, so these are the new uh, door subs I'm going to be installing. Uh, these are six and a half uh, inch uh, ply door subs, and they are 300 watt. Um, as you can see, 6.5 high performance woofer. I'll link them down in the description if you're interested in checking these out. But uh, best bang for the buck, uh, I think these are technically uh, four ohm speakers compared to most of the 6.5 inch subwoofers that you can purchase are actually uh, 8 ohm and you don't want to use those you want the 4 ohm speakers because technically the factory ones are 2 ohm and uh, that's not a big you know problem it's just you're gonna have to turn the bass up a little bit harder to power uh, a higher ohm sub sorry for the rain noise it is raining but um, get the 4 ohm or 2 ohm if you can find them 4 ohm is the best I could find for the wattage and the quality unless you're gonna do some like serious like China China type stuff but I didn't want to go that route, so I got these instead. I got four of them, because there's four uh, in the vehicle, one on each door, and I'm gonna be changing on all four of them today. Okay, so first thing you're gonna need to do is take your door panel off. Uh, I do have another video for that. I'll link it in the description if you wanna check it out. Very straightforward, very you know simple. Uh, all you need to do is um, take out two screws and pop a couple clips and lift it out with your window trim up top. And like I said, I did have another video already on this, so I'll link it down in the description. Uh, the back is a little different, so I'll include that in this video. But uh, for the front door panels, main thing is there's like a little panel right by your lock that you pop this way, and there's a screw. And in your handle where you grab to close the door, there's a little rubber mat that you take out, and there's a screw down there. Take those two screws out, pop the clips all the way around. And then uh, you do have to take out a little plastic Phillips screw right here, pull it out. You can separate this a little bit and that allows you to lift the door panel up out of this gap and take it out. Now your uh, window trim will probably stay right here. Just take the trim back out and stick it back on the door panel. Now what I mean by that is this trim right here is probably gonna stay stuck in the door. Just go ahead and take it out and it just pushes on this way up all around and you just basically pinch it on. And that's it. You can leave your door panel. I put mine in my trunk just so it's out of the way. but. These are all the clips that go around the door panel, so you just have to pop them all the way around. And this is the first screw, and then the other screw is on the bottom. Um, and then you're gonna have a couple uh, connectors. Once for your locking mechanism, it's this little pinch, and then you move it out. Uh, connector here, you gotta disconnect. There's gonna be three connectors down here. You just pinch, 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 and pull them out. Very straightforward. Um, like I said, if you wanna watch the in-depth version, then uh, check out my other video. But beyond that, I'm just gonna close this so that's not having anything land on it. So these are the connections I was just telling you guys about. So your door connection for your handle, it's basically just this little clip. You just clip it and then undo it. Three clips, they all have their own like little uh, push release on them and then this one right here. Now, so this speaker is definitely blown and just to show you, and then just to show you the, if I push on this you're gonna hear the noise. It's bad. So uh, this is this one and my driver's side rear blue and uh, that's why I'm going to be changing these out. Alright so what you're going to want to do once you take the door panel off is go ahead and remove this entire speaker, spacer, assembly. It is all one assembly and we will have to tear the speaker out to reuse the spacer itself because there's not enough depth in the in the actual door to put the new sub in without it actually you know hitting the window. 
Now, I did watch a different video that someone else posted, and they replaced these with uh, speakers. These are not speakers, these are subs. Now, technically a sub is a form of a speaker, but it's not a speaker, it's a sub. How you can know if it's a speaker or a sub, typically speakers have like little tweeters on the you know center right here, and they stick out a little bit. Subs don't have any tweeters, and they're just like cone-shaped like this, so you want to make sure when you're purchasing your new uh, subs that you're going to get the right one. These are 2 ohm uh, speak. Or, these are 2 ohm subs, and uh, you're probably going to have a hard time finding 2 ohm subs. And so I bought 4 ohm subs, which are perfectly fine. Um, and I did test it on the driver's side, it works great. Uh, I'll link them down below, and uh, you can pick up a set if you want, if not something comparable to them. There is going to be this connection right up on top for your uh, sub, which I've already cut on mine because I was in here earlier doing a little bit of, you know, uh, research just to make sure I have the right stuff. So mine's just tucked out of the way. I just disconnected it so it'd stop rattling so I could listen to my music in, you know, decent quality and turn the volume up without it, this thing just going crazy because it sounded really bad. But, uh, yeah, anyway, uh, once you have it like this, go ahead and just, uh, you can just disconnect this, which is a little push in and pull out. You will have to cut the connection uh, later, so you can do that right now if you want to. Uh, disconnect your battery before cutting anything, just so you know you're not going to, you know, short anything out into your amp that's, you know, in the vehicle. Now, uh, once you do get this disconnected, what we're going to do is we're going to drill out these rivets. There's four of them. So go ahead and get a drill bit that uh, can center on that, and you can get a decently large drill bit, maybe about the size of the rivet, maybe a little bit smaller. And you're going to want to try to send it as straight as possible, because sometimes they want to wander off a little bit, and if they do that, you're going to have a hard time getting the rest of the rivet out. So try to get it as centered as possible, take as much time as you need to actually drill these. And uh, once you do drill it, uh, it should just allow you to take this... Um, spacer out with the, with the sub in it already. Now, uh, don't worry about getting the, the rest of the rivet on the door side uh, out at the moment. Just make sure you can drill these out enough to take the, the spacer with the sub out. And that's what we're going to focus on at the moment. Okay, so I got the, the four uh, rivets out and I did actually just bust out the angle grinder and uh, grinded them smooth and used the Phillips uh, screwdriver and the hammer and just popped them through. Came out really easily. But as you can see, this one's slightly de like deformed, so there's a slight dent in there. These ones are fine though, and don't worry if it happens like that, you just don't want to like mangle this completely. But the next thing you want to do is grab a rivet. Uh, you could use a screw, but I recommend rivets, just because this is what Hyundai used, and you don't have to worry about screws backing out over time, and you know, etc. But you could use screws if you wanted to, and just match a screw that will fit in those. Um, but uh, this is what I'm going to use, and what you want to do is find a rivet that fits in there nicely. Um, if it doesn't fit completely, like this is a little too snug for me. So I'm actually going to take a drill bit and just widen them out slightly, just so that this fits in there nicely. And then uh, once you do get that in there, just like that, uh, you can leave this alone, and we'll start working on the actual sub itself. Okay. So for the next step, once you do get the sub out of the car and you're ready to start tearing into it, is literally that, you gotta tear into it. So basically I use a razor blade and I cut around the outside of the cone. And that's, you know, one of the ways of doing it. Make sure you have a really sharp razor to cut through this rubber. And uh, if not, you could just try to like, you know, cut it uh, with like scissors or something. Just be careful, because this material right here, um, once you get it like out, is very sharp and it can slice you really easily. Uh, ask me how I know I was sliced. But uh, just be careful with this. And uh, just basically rip the entire speaker out and you're gonna have to cut through uh, these ribs, rip, uh, these ribs as well. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight different you know ribs you gotta like cut through. And uh, be careful not to hit anything surrounding, but just cut those off in the centers. And uh, you should be good for the next step. Okay, so once you get done tearing out the speaker, uh, what you're going to have left is this uh, spacer ring. And it's going to be a little bit rough, but um, this is what you want to build on, basically, because there's no way of separating it uh, out, because Hyundai built it as a contained unit. So that's fine. But what you want to do next is um, get a flathead screwdriver and stick it in these little creases right here. 
where my nail is sitting. There's one, two, three, and four. Basically you want to stick your flathead in there and twist it and pop this like inner ring out. It is glued in so you can get that out and basically you want to take all of this where the, the foam is. You want to take all of the plastic underneath it out and uh, I'll recap once I get done with that as well. Alright so this is without that inner insulation ring and as you can see it just comes right out and you're left with this uh, ravine basically with these lips. Now uh, you want to take off all this old cone rubber and uh, once you get all this rubber removed you can actually test fit uh, your new uh, sub in here and I recommend uh, cutting like this type of stuff as flush as possible with like the inner ring uh, just because you don't want it accidentally puncturing the inside of your new sub and we're not going to be using these hookups anymore so there is like two little runoffs that go up to here uh, basically you can just cut these out completely and uh, we're just going to drill a hole in the side to run our new wiring through and uh, ditch the connector and whatnot. Uh, you could probably wire this. Um, this won't fit if you're using the same subs that I have. This will not fit. Then you like you have to delete this. Now the two metals, uh, they connect up here. And that's what this connects to. And you could technically try to reuse these for internal wiring. I would recommend it. I just cut those off, cut this off, drill a hole, and uh, run your wiring out of it. You're not going to you know, mess with the audio or anything. You can also hot glue where the wires are coming out so it seals it completely. Um, but yeah, just cut all those little fins off on the inside and take off this rubber and test fit your sub. You will most likely have to take these uh, fins off right here. And what I do is uh, I find a really um, like coarse stone right there and I just basically like go side to side in circles and side to side in circles and up and down in circles. And using that stone it actually rubs these um, ends off really quickly. You could also uh, take flush cutters and cut as you want and then do that step which is uh, it'll save you a little bit of time. Uh, or if you have a Dremel, you could also just Dremel this down, but I recommend just taking the cutters and clipping these off and then just using the stone to flatten it completely. But make sure you get all this old rubber off. Okay, so once you get those um, fins chopped off, I just use my flush cutters. It's pretty soft, so it went pretty easily. You're going to be left with like a jagged surface, and that's where I usually use my uh, coarse stone right here. And then just basically go back and forth, side to side circles and uh, it'll wear this uh, jagged ring down pretty quickly. So I'll go ahead and do that and I'll show you guys what it looks like after. So. Okay, so I did just do that and as you can see it's a lot smoother. It's all the same level which is what's important to seal the new speaker in. Uh, I still need to chop these ribs out. So I'm gonna do that real quick and then I'll show you guys what it looks like after I'm done with that. Okay, so once you get it down to like this and most of the inner uh, ribs are chopped out, you can go ahead and test fit your new subs. Now, um, if you're using the same ones that I'm using, this is still not enough. You're gonna have to um, cut out even more. And from this point, I typically use a Dremel um, just because it's a lot faster. So the sub size that I'm using is 6.5. Now the speakers that I had before that were wrong that I test fit earlier were also 6.5 and they fit like this, but the subs that I have now do not fit. So if you're using the same ply subs that I am, uh, what you're going to have to do is, uh, with the Dremel, or however you're going to do it, you can use an angle grinder or something, just, you know, be careful. Um, typically, you're going to have to cut in um, this, like, pretty much where the where the rubber ring used to sit all the way around is uh, the center point. You're going to have to basically cut all the center point out with the... Um, I'm using a Dremel. This is what I'm using. So, with the Dremel. And uh, that makes pretty good work of it. You just basically pop it in and slowly work it all the way around. And then when you do get it done, uh, you have these inner fins, which I typically cut out. Uh, just so it's basically like a ring. And right where this like blue speck is, is right where the new subs are going to bolt up to. So you have to leave a little bit of a lip right here. That's why I said about half. And then you can... Uh, when you set your sub in, you can mark the spots and tap it with a drill bit. And uh, then I'm using some insulation foam. Uh, this is typically like what you'd use for like packages and whatnot. 
uh, you can pick this up at you know pretty much any store and uh, I'm gonna use a template and so I'm using this template um, and it actually has to be half the thickness of this but this is like a basic template that I usually use and then once I cut this out I typically go back and cut like half of this ring just because that's all that's going to be necessary right around here and uh, if you don't have a template that's perfectly fine once you get done cutting this out you can actually just flip it over uh, trace this onto some foam and then uh, same thing on the inside once you take out the ring you can just run the pen on the inside and that'll tell you exactly uh, how big of a piece to cut this stuff is pretty cheap not too expensive and uh, I set it right between this and the new sub one, so it doesn't vibrate, and two, so it seals properly. Uh, just makes it a, you know, a tighter fit, and it, uh, you know, it's gonna sound better because it's not, you know, having any sound escaping. But yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, start that now. Okay, so at this point, you can go ahead and test your sub. Uh, this is my uh, little um, mechanism I use to test the sub, just because the magnet tip typically sits a little bit lower and you don't want that on the ground so you can actually see if it sits flush with your spacer and in my case it does so just a two by fours and uh, you want to make sure you know it sits flush all the way around and this is what it looks like now if i take the sub out carefully uh, you can see this is my end result and it doesn't look pretty but it doesn't necessarily have to as long as you know it, it's gonna fit and when you are cutting around, just typically try to leave a little bit of room uh, around these. Don't like file it too close. You can leave, you know, pretty much, you know, a little bit of thickness all the way around. And just so, because that's where we're going to be sinking our screws into. I will be pre-tapping these with a smaller drill bit. This one, it's a very small drill bit. And then I will be using these screws, which technically are not, you know, audio, <clears throat> are not audio screws, but they have a nice point. And they are self tappers, and uh, they are flat ended, so they sit flush, which is important. You don't want anything that protrudes, uh, just because when you put the door panel on, you don't want it to hit. So I'm gonna go ahead and set the sub back in here, line it up properly. If you are using these same subs, they line up perfectly with these little notches. You just want to rotate it until it sits in there nicely and then once it does carefully and I mean this you know very seriously be very careful um, I'm gonna use the drill bit and basically just while I'm holding my hand like this tap these you don't want to accidentally slip and puncture the ring I've done that before and it really sucks because it ruins the sub or speaker so cover it with your hand so if you stab your hand it is what it is you don't want to sub you don't want to stab this new ring at all okay and so before I actually uh, tap the spots I just cut out like a rough little ring that fits it nicely it doesn't have to look pretty again uh, this is gonna be you know squished by the sub and it's just to prevent any vibration or um, sound escape uh, you know between where the um, surfaces and the sub now I'm going to set the sub inside of here and now I'm going to tap the spots with the drill bit and then very carefully um, also set my screws inside the, the, the sub as well so that sits on there it doesn't have to be very thick at all this is actually too thick this is what fit my speaker it does not fit the sub it's about half the thickness so that's why I'm using this now and uh, yeah I'm gonna go ahead and just grab the sub and just set that in there and you can go around and just tuck it in around where it's still sticking out of. As long as it's sealed, that's what matters. And you can align it where you need to. Kind of like squish it down, push it in if you need to all around it. And like I said, you're not going to see any of this once the door panel's back on. It's just, you know, for you know better sound and less vibration. Okay, so now that's on there, I'm going to go ahead and cover the cone while holding the sub down and tap my spots with the drill bit. You're going to want to drill and tap a hole right on top. I just did it offset uh, from the center. And this is so that you can fit your wiring through and you can hot glue that after or, you know, whatever you want to do to seal that up. Okay, so once you get your uh, your foam in, you tapped it, uh, you're going to set your, your, your screws in and everything now. And it should be looking like this. Now you can see that it squeezed and pushed all around the foam and it is an entire solid unit now. 
and you can go ahead and push pull and it should uh, not move should be contained sealed not vibrating or anything and uh, we can do our wiring so uh, for this step I recommend pushing those two two by fours together take another piece of foam and then you can set this upside down on top of that foam okay so there's a couple different ways of doing the wiring uh, I'm gonna be soldering mine you could use those little push clip connectors um, but honestly with the amount of vibration I don't really want anything being able to pop off or wiggle off over time and so I'm gonna be doing the soldering and this is the way I'm doing it so I basically run the wiring uh, underneath and then through the hole and then on top of it and then I'm gonna lay down some solder so this one's already done as you can see and that one's next and then once I get done with that I'm gonna run some heat shrink over and you can't get all the way over it but you can get up like over the post uh, on both of these and that way you know it's not gonna have any vibrations or wiggling and break the solder over time or anything and you can also move the wiring as you need around here to come out the top so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, solder this one on put the heat shrink on and then I'm gonna wire it up the top okay so this is the finished uh, wiring on the sub side uh, soldered on heat shrink now what I'm gonna do next is basically just tuck these um, wires over and around and uh, there's a hole at the top that we drilled earlier so I'm gonna use that hole to route these through and those should sit right on the inside and now it's optional if you want to or not I am going to I have a hot glue gun right there I'm gonna tuck these down along the plastic rim right here so it's not you know around the magnet and uh, hot glue it down on both sides that way these wires aren't wiggling vibrating anything it's not gonna you know go near the magnet which isn't necessarily a bad thing it's just a personal preference of mine I don't want it around the magnet I'd rather have it around the bottom of the, the cone and not like in the rubber cone but like on the plastic side um, of the spacers when I'm going to be hot gluing it to. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Run these out the hole right up on top right there that we drilled and then uh, hot glue that in as well. Okay, so this is the finished wiring with the hot glue holding the uh, wires down. I also did put bullet connectors on the end just so it's easy to connect and disconnect if needed. That's the finished wiring and as you can see on the front this is what it's going to be like to install. So now it is actually ready to be installed down here is uh, you know where we're gonna put it back so uh, I only fortunately only have one alignment dowel if you have both it kind of holds it there for you but because I don't have both it's just gonna be the one so you kind of have to hold it with one hand while you uh, um, either screw it in or uh, re-rivet it in and I'm gonna be using rivets uh, if you have an electric riveter like a, like a drill powered riveter that'd be amazing um, I don't have one of those if you have like a uh, rivet stud gun where it actually like gives you the threads you could insert them right here and then put it on there but you'd have to add an extra layer of foam right here to seal it just because the studs typically like leave, leave a lip and it won't seal completely on here so i'm just gonna use what honda used and re-rivet it but uh yeah i'm gonna go ahead and set this in here um and then go ahead and re-rivet it in there and then after i will show you guys what's the positive and negative up here uh, I used the multimeter already and figured it out, but uh, black on my speaker, on my subs, are always going to be positive, so blue is negative and black is positive. Okay, so this is actually it installed. Uh, as you can see, black is going to be your positive and blue is going to be your negative. Uh, go ahead and hook it up like that and you should be good to go. Alright, so now I'm going to go ahead and move to the back, and the back door panel removal is basically the same thing. Uh, with the exception that there's no uh, plastic Phillips screw thing over on the side over here. Uh, all you have to do is, you know, take this back cover out, this one right here, pull up the back mat, screw, screw, remove both of those screws, and then just pop the clips all the way around. And then you can lift the door panel up and out to get the weather strip out of the channel, and then we'll have access to the speaker. And now one more thing to remember, once you do get that screw out and that screw out, uh, you do want to pop all the clips down here at the bottom, but don't just rip the door panel off. Remember that there's one more right here, and uh, this is going to be your most important one because this is the most sensitive clip that may actually break. And uh, what you want to do is just take a trim tool and slide it right in here. And I think I broke mine, but uh, typically, you know, these ones are the most fragile. If it breaks, it breaks, but try to just avoid doing that. And uh, once you do get that clip off right there, um, go ahead and grab it by the bottom of the door panel. 
lift the weather strip out of the channel and then you can actually pull the door panel back, disconnect the handle and then the electrical connection as well. So on the inside of the door panel, it's easier for me to show you just like this, but uh, all you gotta do is clip this piece right here and then lift the back end out and then pull it out. Uh, two clips, so it has like a little you know push clip release and then another one push clip re release. And then you can just tuck these out of the way and you have access to the speaker right down here. Now, on the other side, the driver's back door, I've already done that one, but um, it was uh, red, power, green, negative. I'm gonna test it again with the multimeter just to make sure, and then I'll pulse, I'll, I'll show you guys what I hook it up as, uh, that way you can follow along. Black on my aftermarket subs are always gonna be positive, and the blue is gonna be negative, so however you see me hook it up to those is gonna be the polarity on what you would wanna hook it up on yours. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect this, tuck that out of the way, drill out the rivets, and then go ahead and take this uh, sub out and go ahead and tear it apart. Okay, and this is the final install. Uh, I am going to electrical tape the connections just so they don't, uh, you know, accidentally pop off or anything. They shouldn't. Bolt connectors are pretty solid, but just in case. Uh, black is always gonna be positive for mine, uh, so green is positive on the passenger rear door orange is negative so that's how i hooked this up and uh, if you're curious on how to find uh, what's positive and negative i just used the basic multimeter and i switched it over to the 1.5 volts and probed the connections and you'll see if it's positive or negative uh, it'll just show directly on the screen a negative if not but uh the fronts don't have two sets of wires the backs do so don't be alarmed when you see this um, but yeah, so I hooked it up and then I'll, at the end of the video, I'll post, um, each door, what the positive and negative is for the color code that's, uh, assigned to that door. But, uh, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and wrap these up in electrical tape, just tuck them back here, put the door panel back on and then, um, be good to go. If you guys are enjoying these type of videos, definitely subscribe. I have a lot of, uh, BH Genesis, uh, type, uh, content on my channel. And I also have a lot of other builds that I'm currently doing um, posted on there as well. So, you know, everything is really about how you can impress the algorithm. And uh, every like on this video, or if you share it, comment, you know, even subscribing uh, helps the algorithm, you know, get my videos out there. And I really appreciate you guys, you know, um, showing your support and, um, you know, watching all the videos that I post. So, appreciate it. Have a good day.